Hey, Math 20-2s. Let's investigate rate of change today. All right, so start with slope and rate. Part 1. Robin is preparing to make taquitos for supper. She preheats the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The graph shown represents the temperature of an oven as it warms up. What does the point 0, 050 on the graph represent? Right here. What does this point right there, 0, 050, represent? Well, at time 0, we get a temperature of 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So we should say this is the initial temperature of the oven. All right. Initial temperature of the oven. What does the point 5, 400 on the graph represent? So that's this point right here. Time of 5 seconds, a temperature of 400 degrees, sorry, time of 5 minutes, a temperature of 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's exactly what that says. After five minutes, the temperature of the oven has increased to 400 degrees. So after five minutes of heating that oven up, the new temperature or the temperatures increased to now being 400 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Part C, calculate the slope of the line joining these two points. So definition of slope is rise over run. So slope y2 minus y1, 400 minus 50, over x2 minus x1, 5 minus 0, gives us 350 over 5, which in lowest terms would be 70 over 1. All right. D, the slope represents a rate of change. A change in temperature divided by a change in time. What units are used to represent this rate of change? Well, rise is degrees Fahrenheit. Run is time in minutes. There are our um, units to represent this rate. So degrees Fahrenheit divided by minutes. Complete the following statement then. The temperature is increasing or decreasing. Well, we're seeing the temperature increase from 50 degrees to 400 degrees at a rate of 70 degrees Fahrenheit per minute. That's our rate. Part two. Water is leaking out of a bottom of a barrel at a constant rate. After two minutes, the water level is 62 centimeters. And after seven minutes, the water level is 22 centimeters. On the grid, plot ordered pairs for time and water level to represent this information. So they're telling us time is our x-axis. And if we look at our units, it looks like they're in minutes. And water levels are y-axis. So let's label that water level. And that looks like it's in centimeters. So let's plot the information. At two minutes, the water level is at 62 centimeters. We'll say that. Two minutes, 62 centimeters. And at seven minutes, we'll say there is seven, the water level is down to 22 centimeters. All right. So this is the point 262. This is the point 722. Calculate the slope of the line segment joining these ordered pairs, part B. So if I join those two ordered pairs, find the slope of that line segment. So slope is y2 minus y1, 22 minus 62, over x2 minus x1, 7 minus 2. So we get 22 minus 62 is a negative 40, over 7 minus 2 is 5. Negative 40 divided by 5 is a negative 8. C, the slope represents a rate of change, a change in water level divided by a change in time. What units are used to represent this rate of change? So rise, centimeters, over run, minutes. That's our unit, centimeters per minute. All right. So let's complete the following to explain what rate of change is represented by this scenario. The water level is changing at a rate of 
eight centimeters per minute. The water level is decreasing. Well, changing the rate of eight, I guess the slope's negative, so we'll say negative eight centimeters per minute. Water level is decreasing, so we can take that negative sign out now. It says decreasing at a rate of eight centimeters per minute. All right. Slope as a rate of change. In the previous investigation, we discovered the following statement. Slope represents a rate of change. Note, rate of change can be used to describe many scenarios. For example, change in distance traveled to change in time, change in temperature to change in time, change in salary to change in sales, all sorts of neat ways that slope is the same as rate of change. A positive slope indicates a positive rate of change, and a negative slope indicates a negative rate of change. On a graph of distance as a function of time, the slope of the line segment joining two points represents the average speed. All right, so we're talking about distance versus time graphs. Slope is a measurement of average speed between two points. So let's look at that example in example one here. Dave entered his car in a long distance car race. He traveled the first 150 kilometers in two hours, and after six hours, he traveled 650 kilometers. Plot the order of pairs to represent this information. Explain why 0, 0 is indicated as an ordered pair in this scenario. So, what's, we got time versus distance, so our horizontal axis is time, and this time looks to be in hours. versus vertical axis is distance, and that looks to be in kilometers. So we need to go all the way to six hours. One, two, three, four, five, six, sure. Two, four, six, eight would be out there. So there's good units for that. We have to get all the way up past 600 kilometers. So, mm, sure, let's make this 100, 200, 3, 4, 500, 600 kilometers. So we've got our axis labeled and a scale given. After two hours, he'd driven 150 kilometers. So that's about there. Two hours, 150 kilometers. After six hours, he's driven 650. So six and 650 would be there. All right. It also says that we should include zero, zero in this scenario. So here's zero, zero. Why should we include zero, zero? Explain why. Well, at time zero, he has not moved or he hasn't traveled anywhere. He's traveled zero kilometers. So calculate Dave's average speed between two hours and six hours. So between two and six, let's figure out that average speed. All right. So average speed, we were told, is the same as finding slope. Slope as a, uh, on a distance time graph is the same as average speed. So we've got our ordered pair. This would be 6 and 650. And this would be 2 and 150. So y2 minus y1 is 650 minus 150 divided by x2 minus x1, 6 minus 2. So we've got 500 divided by 4, which gives us 125 and rises kilometers over one hour, 125 kilometers per hour. Is this considered a rate of change? Yes. Most definitely. 125 kilometers per hour is definitely a rate of change. See, by looking at the grid and without doing any calculations, how can you tell that the average speed during the first two hours was less than the average speed during the next four? So these first two hours would be a smaller average speed than the last four. How can you tell that? Well, the slope of the line is smaller. Slope of the line is less steep. All right, so if our slope's smaller, we're going to have to have a smaller 
rate of change. All right. Uh, what does it say next? The graph shown represents the amount of fuel in Dave's gas tank as a function of the distance traveled during a portion of the race when he drove at a constant speed. Calculate the slope of the line. All right, let's find the slope of this line segment. Y2 minus Y1, 40 minus 50, divided by X2 minus X1, 120 divided by, sorry, 120 subtract 20. So you've got negative 10 over 100, which is negative 1 over 10. Complete the following statement then. The amount of fuel in the tank is increasing or decreasing? Well, obviously the amount of fuel started at 50, went to 40, so that's definitely decreasing. We can see it in the slope. That's a decreasing statement. You've got a negative slope. The rate of change of fuel in the fuel tank is negative one-tenth liters, right? These are liters per kilometer. The amount of fuel in the gas tank is decreasing at rate of one-tenth a liter per kilometer. All right. Great. You guys can do questions one through nine, the ones you've been assigned. Away you go.